Hello friends, in this video, I want to share with you some of my views regarding resection of a large middle lobe or median lobe of the prostate and I will highlight to you an anatomy based technique in my video. In part one, I will first tell you why should you learn the three dimensional anatomy of the middle lobe at the first go? The resection of the middle of the prostate is often troublesome, particularly for the beginners. The main reason for the problem is that you are not able to see behind the middle lobe into the bladder lumen and by your loop, you can create injury to trigone or bladder inadvertently. Secondly, when you resect the prostate from the cut surface of the middle lobe, the bleeders bleed into the bladder lumen and this will not be visible to you sometimes, which will lead to greater blood loss. And when you have bleeders pumping blood in the bladder lumen, the vision becomes very poor which becomes a factor for greater risk of posterior bladder wall injury. So because of these reasons, the resection of the middle lobe is tricky. To solve these problems, it is better that in your preoperative planning, you know the three dimensional anatomy of the prostate. And in one of my previous videos, I have already highlighted the ways to know the three dimensional morphology of the prostate, wherein you want to know about the size, the shape and then the middle lobe anatomy. Before I show you radiographic ways to know the three dimensional anatomy, let me illustrate to you what can be the variations in the anatomy of the middle lobe. For instance, here the middle lobe is attached to the prostate by a narrow stalk and then it may decide to grow upwards vertically up into the bladder like that or it may grow backwards towards the posterior wall of the bladder in anterior posterior dimension in one patient it may look like this in another patient it may grow like that and when the middle lobe gets a big base, it gets more blood supply, it can pop up more into the bladder lumen. In a similar fashion, the base of the middle lobe can be narrow like a stalk here and the middle lobe may hang in the bladder like a snake head. In some patients, the base may be broad and in another patient, base may be even broader and the prostate gland is jetting into the bladder lumen. So friends, the middle lobe can grow in all the dimensions and this will vary in each patient. So before you go in the bladder and start thinking of resecting the middle lobe, it is better that you know what is happening in that particular patient. You know, just like trying to know all about the loin before you enter the loin stem. In some patients, of the middle lobe. It is not only the middle lobe which is big, but the posterior part of the prostate is also big like that or like this. And you have a combination, a big posterior lobe and a big median lobe. So having known these variations in illustrations and then if I tell you that you have to study the morphology of the prostate gland size and shape and also the middle lobe, what are the ways by which you can know this detailed anatomy of the middle lobe? You may have some impression by ultrasound of KUB area on a full bladder, but over the years we have used transrectal ultrasonography for this purpose, reasonable test, economical test. But nowadays you have the facility of doing a high resolution CT 
or an MRI. And when you do this three dimensional imaging, if you have a catheter in the bladder lumen, it becomes an added advantage. Now here's a picture of ultrasound KUB, wherein you can very easily spot out the middle of the prostate protruding into the bladder lumen. Here is a transrectal ultrasound of the patient who has a median lobe. And when you run this in a video, this is a, a vertical projection of middle lobe and this is the uh, transverse scan telling you the how broad is an attachment of the middle lobe. What you can also do in truss that you can measure the volume of the prostate gland separately that is here like one dimension and another dimension and then the vertical dimension where you measure up to the level of bladder neck the prostate so you have measured the prostate gland separately and in trust you can now image the medial lobe selectively like here this is the transverse view and this is the longitudinal view and you can focus it and then place your uh, cursors on the middle lobe alone like here sideways one dimension another dimension and then this is the third dimension so you can calculate the median lobe volume on transrectal ultrasound so it's a good way of knowing 3d anatomy but then the problem is it is a subjective test and once done by the sonologist and you have to operate the patient at that time you will not have these videos you may have only report so it is better that you utilize the modern tools like three tesla mri for 3d imaging of the prostate it will provide you hard films it will provide you cine videos you can see it just prior to the surgery now what all you can learn from this and i have here to give you some examples here look at this patient this in this mri you see that one lobe of the prostate has grown lateral words and from the lateral side the middle lobe is protruding into the bladder and this is the urethra here in green and another patient again look at the the width of the base and then this is the urethra here so on this you can assess the broadness of the base of the middle lobe in this mri as you see the middle lobe this is the base of the middle lobe and that is here where the bladder neck is so this middle lobe is arising from prostate anterior to the urethra which is different from most of the patients and you have to know this before you begin the resection in either example look at the size of the middle lobe and this is the the base the width of the base and this is the distance for which it is protruding into the bladder lumen and this is the sagittal section by which you know what is the anterior posterior extension of the base so it's a pretty big middle lobe this is the protrusion of the middle lobe into bladder lumen in either example here is another middle lobe and urethra is coursing somewhere here shown by the red mark now can you imagine that everything is anterior to urethra the entire prostate as well as the middle lobe which is protruding into the bladder this is the side extension of the middle lobe arising from the one lobe of the prostate in another example this is the protrusion of middle lobe and you can have an idea about the base but as you take sections from midline to parasagittal you notice change in the structure of the middle lobe 
So it is not uniform in all the sections. In anterior posterior dimension, when you see this one single picture, you will have an impression that it is a narrow stalk middle lobe. But when you take sections deeper into bladder, towards the posterior wall, the base becomes broad. As you go more posterior, base becomes even broader. So it is not a uniform anterior posteriorly the attachment of the middle lobe. Narrow towards the bladder neck, as you go more posterior, it becomes bigger, wider. In another example, the look at this middle lobe arising from the posterior lobe of the prostate. The posterior lobe and the middle lobe is riding over the anterior lobe, like one block over the another block. And you can see the urethra. And when you do a sectional imaging, here you see the top of the middle lobe and all around the middle lobe you can see some urine. And another section, still this middle lobe is protruding into bladder and you can see urine around. So this part of a middle lobe can be resected easily without the risk of damage to the bladder because it is jetting into bladder lumen. Only precaution you have to keep is have a full bladder at the time of resection of this part so that you don't damage the posterior wall of bladder. This MRI therefore is helpful in giving you this kind of hint. Whatever pictures of MRI you saw till now were without a catheter in the urethra. But then friends, the transuthal resection is done through the urethra and you have to know the prostatic anatomy in reference to the urethra where your receptoscope is placed. So my feeling is if you do MRI with catheter in situ, it is still better like here. This is the catheter shaft, sagittal view and you can estimate the volume of the prostate anterior to catheter and posterior to the catheter and you can also see the middle lobe behind the Foley balloon. In this patient and the sagittal section, you know the anterior posterior extension of the middle lobe and then you can know at various levels. Here is the same patient where you can see the catheter is located here by a black dot and you can see a big middle lobe which is arising from the left lobe of the patient. Look at the size of the middle lobe and the Foley balloon is sitting on top of it. This kind of picture you may see in some patients. So friends, I hope you saw these different pictures of MRI of prostate and the middle lobe. And I think you're convinced that 3D imaging of the prostate is useful adjunct in preoperative planning for transuthal resection. Thank you for watching this video. And we'll talk about the technique of middle lobe resection in the next video. Thank you.